Hey guys it's Mr. Happy Jr. here with an amazing top 5 video. Believe it or not, I'm actually trying to broaden the content on this channel beyond exposing videos. Despite exposing videos being an extremely original idea I came up with that everyone loves. So here is another original idea that I brewed up recently. I call it a top 5 video. And in today's episode we are covering the top 5 features that Geometry Dash may be better without. I will be giving my opinion and reasoning throughout the video. Keep in mind that this list is in no particular order. I hope you enjoy and please make sure to like and subscribe for more gamer text to speech content. So I'm gonna be doing bloodbath, but actually continuing map packs because why not? In GD there is a huge grind that comes along with unlocking the various icons, but map packs are some of the most grindy by far. Map packs were obviously thrown in by Rob Top to create more content for the game, but with very little effort. They were actually somewhat acceptable in early GD, but now with the development of the game it just seems like lazy filler content that is left to stick around. There are currently 65 map packs, each containing 3 levels, totaling up to 195 total levels, most of the levels being very old with outdated gameplay and decoration. Let me give you a quick refresher on some of the map pack levels. Like 1.9 or something. Oh no, we missed. Oh no, they're brown, so they're like. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so cool, but so like. It's so close to the spikes. You're so close. Now these like yellow pads, which you can skip. Because you're too cool for them. You could prove them as boss. See, I skipped it. I honestly feel bad for whoever actually went through the chore of completing all of these levels just to be rewarded with some yellow coins. Now Rob Top has even included a new feature called Gauntlets. This is literally the same thing as map packs, but now they have super epic art for each pack. Look at that art, it looks so good! Yeah. They also contain newer levels that follow a more clear cut theme, rather than map packs which have levels that don't correspond with the pack name at all. So what's the point of map packs even existing, if gauntlets are just better map packs? That there's a way you could actually go into the mirror world, you know the same place that my evil twin lives? Honestly I don't know what these things are even called, but I think the majority of us can agree that they are just really annoying. There are only a few scenarios I can think of where this was actually a good addition to a level. For example Bloodbath. But for the most part these reverse portals don't really add anything to a level and often feel awkward. All of this is also not mentioning the new way to go backwards in Geometry Dash 2.2. This new addition is basically what the screen flip portal should have been to begin with. And now that it's coming to the game in the next update it makes this reverse portal look like a cheap knockoff. But we're doing an extreme demon. It's called Quest for Perfection by Laser Blitz, which is a remake of- Okay, I'm going to need you to be honest with me here. When was the last time you actually did one of these quests intentionally? If ever, it was probably around the time that the quests were just added in the 2.1 update. But besides that they are kind of an unnecessary addition. The reason Rob Top added the quests was to have players come back daily in order to complete their new set of quests and continue grinding for those epic GD icons. But honestly I feel like the quests are very ineffective. They are also very generic and boring. Maybe if the quest said something like complete a rated level using spacebar only, then I might be a bit more interested in completing a challenge like that. But hey, maybe I'm wrong and there are actually some diehard quest grinders out there. Last chest. Let's do this. <gasps> yes! Yes! Now chests are just literally pointless. You might have already seen Etz's video on this topic. The logic of geometry has chests into another scenario, it appears much more boring than it previously did. Imagine that on your birthday you got 200 presents. First, your friends and family show you all 200 presents that you are going to get and then wrap them in front of your eyes. Then the presents are scrambled up and you open them one by one in a random order. He explains it very well, and I recommend the video. Basically chests are set to always eventually give you the same items. And yes it's just as dumb as it sounds. 
so by the end of it, you will have the same items as everyone else anyways. I think this is just Rob Top trying to jump in on the loot box trend that is popular with a lot of other games. It actually may have worked, because I'm sure a lot of people actually like it, but those people probably don't realize that their chest opening destiny is already set. So when I opened Geometry Dash, I saw that they added blueberries. During 2.0 it seemed pretty simple with the three different collectibles. Stars, secret coins, and creator coins. But since 2.1 everything just seems so convoluted. With the addition of orbs, diamonds, shards, and keys, I feel like I'm juggling all this extra stuff with me. I imagine people new to Geometry Dash would have a hard time keeping up with what each currency does, and how to obtain it. But who am I kidding I don't think anyone is really getting into Geometry Dash these days, just the old folks are left. But anyways that concludes my top 5 list. I know this video was almost a little ranty, so I would like to clarify that I respect Rob Top's game decisions and I think he's adding some amazing features to 2.2. This was a different type of video for me so feel free to leave feedback, and if you want more top 5 lists in the future, bye bye.